I hope you all can see this all right. I think I've got it set up now. Everything's working. And I want to tell you a little story. Uh, back in uh, 1963, or 1964 I guess it was, my first wife's father and I, my father-in-law at that time, was uh, going to a uh, fishing trip. And it was I believe it was Lake Jordan that was going to here in Alabama. But anyhow, just the two of us, uh, Eddie, my uh, brother-in-law, he was in school, and, and uh, he wasn't going to be able to make it on this one. It was a weekday. And uh, we went over there, and we got there about uh, 7 o'clock in the morning, and uh, we was fishing. We had a, a a small boat and used a sculling paddle to operate it. Didn't have no trolling motor on it. And uh, in fact, back then, trolling motors were uh, kind of scarce, hard to get. And uh, but anyhow, uh, I was in the front of the boat and. Uh, I'd caught quite a few bass, uh, probably five or six. My father-in-law hadn't caught one. He said, Rog, he said, you're uh, hitting all the pockets and I can't catch no bass. I said, well, let's change boats. That ends. And I said, I'll fish behind the boat. And, uh, of course, I was still catching bass even behind the boat, the same pockets he cast it in, just different lure, different presentation. And uh, so we went on there and fished a couple of hours, and I looked off behind us uh, across the lake, and I seen a rainstorm coming. Well, it wasn't very big, and I just kept on fishing. And the way it was moving, when it got to about, I don't know, 75 yards of us it was just a wall of water of rain and uh, I just kind of kept my end where it wasn't no rain <laughs> and it was kind of moving in the same direction as I was going but I was able to keep up with it with the sculling paddle and once it got to us um, it, it was just pouring down in the in the underneath the, where the, the rain started, you could cut it with a knife. It was such a sharp start. There wasn't no sprinkles or nothing. He just all of a sudden was in a wall of water. Well, I kept his end of the boat going the same direction as it was, and it was just started raining on him like cats and dogs. And I was sitting in the back of the boat, dry as a bone, and. He, he was all hunkered over, he getting wet, and uh, uh, I seen the little shower wasn't going to last for a little bit, and I just turned around and uh, was fishing out of the back of the boat like I didn't even know it was raining. And uh, all of a sudden the rain stopped, and he said, boy, that was a downpour, and he turned around, I said, what is that? He said, that rain, he said, that was downpour. I said, well, I didn't even know it was raining. I just dry as a bone. And he said, you mean you didn't get rained on? I said, well, I didn't know it was raining. Uh, all I'd had done was backed up a few feet with that sculling paddle, and he'd been out of the rain too, but I just couldn't resist uh, doing what I did. He was a good man, and uh, we laughed about that uh, for an hour, I guess, after it happened, but uh, he was, uh, at the time I was a buck sergeant, he was a master sergeant, and uh, he, uh, awful good fellow. I miss him tremendously, but uh, oh, he passed away, I guess it was in the 70s or 80s, 
late seventies, I think. I'm not. I can't really. I can't remember when it was he passed away, but he was a he was a good man. And uh, I think he when he when he retired, I think he was uh, either a, a chief master sergeant or a senior master sergeant. I just can't remember which one it was, but uh, he deserved whatever he got. He got pretty sick there for a while. Had to have uh, some uh, arteries fixed. On it. I, I don't remember exactly where they was at. Uh, along his backbone somewhere, and they just uh, when they cut him open, they just laid all of his entrails out on a table. Done the operation, took veins out of his leg and put in place of the ones that they was fixing. And then when they got done, they just laid all of his entrails in, and uh, uh, he told, they told him that uh, what they'd done, and he was uh, telling me, and uh, I said, they didn't place them in there just so-so? He said, no, they just dumped them in there, said they'd find their own place where they're supposed to be as they, as they worked with the chime and stuff going th and the food going through the body. And I guess he did. He he lived for years after that operation. He was only a, I think a, I believe a, he was just a master sergeant at the time, and he he lived for several years after that. Went fishing with him a lot, and uh, so. Uh, but that was just a little story I wanted to tell you. Uh, uh, we went fishing a lot together and caught a lot of fish. And uh, at, at that time, uh, I had just uh, been married to his daughter, uh, oh, just a short time, or either that or we hadn't got married yet, I can't remember. But uh, we, went, we went hunting one day, and... Uh, <coughs> There's a lot of rattlesnakes down in Alabama at the place we was hunting. And he said, Roger, we was crossing a fence. And for me, I could just uh, step across the top wire and I don't know if I crossed the same place he was crossing or not. But he crossed and he, he stopped. And uh, he said, Roger, he said, shoot this rattlesnake. I looked down, I couldn't see no rattlesnake. And I said, uh, I can't see it, boys. Where's it at? He said, it's right between my feet. I said, well, I can't shoot it. I said, these uh, shot. We, we was uh, squirrel hunting for what was done. And I said, this uh, shotgun, uh, allow them to take your feet out. And uh, I said, you best just step on across and not do it real quick and startle him. And uh, so he did. And the snake there did uh, try to bite him, but it, it was only about 10 inches long or 12. It was a pygmy rattler, but they're just as deadly as a big one. But uh, I'd rather went through the snake bite as to shot his leg off and him have to go through that. But uh, uh, that's the way things happen sometimes. you got to make, make a hard choice, and the best choice was for him to step on across that Thing I after he got across there, I said, "Well, ain't no sense in the sense of shooting that snake now. It didn't bite you. He let you alone. We'll leave it alone." He said, "Yeah." He said, "It, it was uh, took care of us." So uh, anyhow, that was another little thing. We had a lot of little stories like that that would happen when we was out hunting and stuff. And uh, one night we went out hunting. Yeah, we we just went out had about three hours four before dark and uh, I went into a place that was uh, pretty thick and uh, I, I got a deer and I couldn't carry it the way I come in because I couldn't see good enough to go through the thicket and uh, my grandson just come in from Colorado and I, I, I hear him but I don't see him but uh, Anyhow, 
uh, I knew there was a logging road right behind me about a uh, hundred yards so I, I got that deer up on my shoulders and was packing him out and uh, uh, I walked uh, <coughs> probably a mile before I got to the main road and when I got to the asphalt and I turned left to go back to where the car was or the truck was parked, whatever it was it was in. I don't remember it at this point. But it uh, seems like it was a car. But uh, anyhow, uh, it was probably an hour after dark and he got worried about me because he didn't get one. He got back right at, right at dark. He could see to get out. And uh, all of a sudden, this car come up and stopped beside me, and it was him. And he said, boy, I thought you was lost in them woods or you hadn't made it. I said, well, I got this deer. I shouldn't, couldn't carry it out the way, the way we come in. I said, I had to take that logging road out to the main road. And I said, it took a while longer. And I said, plus I had to field dress this deer. And uh, so uh, I could go on for... Uh, for several hours telling different things like that had happened and uh, we uh, we really had some good times together but uh, anyhow I'm going to close this one out uh, I'll be back in a couple of days with another one y'all chew on this in a while and uh, God bless you and he will if you let him and uh, I'll see you on the next one